cruise, resort, vacation. Do you love to cruise? So do I. I'm Z Michelson from the J and Z Show on Z Max Radio. Booking, reservation, family, fun, memory. All of this and more on this edition of Z Michelson's Travel Podcast as she helps you rediscover America. And I'm Jay Lawrence. And this is Z. Michelson. And welcome to the Z. Michelson Travel Podcast for today. Um, Z, I understand we're taking a tour of the United States, and we're going to be looking at one state at a time. Right. We're going to take our time going through all of our wonderful states. And and today and last week, we, we of course, were in the state of Rhode Island. Yes. We're in the state of Rhode Island, and uh, we're going to stay with Rhode Island for a few more podcasts because we, there's so much to do in such a little, little space. And just to recap, mm-hmm. uh, Rhode Island is the smallest area. It has an eighth of the least populous in the area. Right. And the second most dense population because of the size. I know. It, it just doesn't and it's po- also a, a vacation destination, so that adds to the populace. Right. Mm-hmm. And the official name is also the longest of any state. Right. Well, they've cut that, as as we know. We spoke about that the last time, that they cut it to just Rhode Island. Right. Right. Because <laughs> it gets too long. <laughs> so Rhode Island was also one of the first original 13 colonies. Yes, it was, and it was a very brave little state, too. Yeah, but they <laughs> Because they were out. one of the first ones that declared their independence. Right, but then mm-hmm. they held out, and they were the last state to sign it. To sign it, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, I guess that there was a few things they wanted rewrit, you know? Right. <laughs> so the nickname for Rhode Island is the Ocean State. Yes, and that's basically what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about beaches. What a lead-in that could be. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about beaches. We're talking about everything. We've got a traveling trivia question coming up a little later. We've got some other information that we're going to give you. So what beach would you want to go to? Well, first of all, I want to talk about the beaches in general. Because okay. last time we spoke, you said, well, Rhode Island's not an island. And I says, well, it's not, but it is. You had to show so, it to me. Right. I had to show it to you on the map. Map. And with all the beaches, and I had told you that Rhode Island is broken into regions. Yes. So but region by region, you have all the different beaches as well. You have the Blackstone Valley, which has its own beach, and Block Island, which have its own beaches, and East Bay, which has its own beaches. Also Newport County, which has its own beaches, and South County, of course, which has its own beaches. The list go on and on. Thus, well, it could be called mm-hmm. the Ocean State. Yes. And it's beaches, beaches, beaches. Now, um, there are more shielded beaches of the Narragansett Bay area. They feature breakwater barriers because a lot of people like that. And it might be suitable for, you know, the novice swimmer, people that are really not into swimming right out in the ocean. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, They also have some areas for the surfers. Yes. You know, so you want to look to see which beaches might be more appropriate for you to go to. There's numerous ocean beaches with thundering surf. I mean, you know, the crashing. I just love to listen to the waves crash. I could, I can't, um, I'm sorry. I have to, no, no. Really? You don't like to hear that? That's one reason why I personally live in the center of the state of Florida. Oh, and I can sit and listen to the ocean waves and just go to sleep by it. So I just love the crashing of that. And there's some beautiful rocky areas Mm -hmm. that you can see and hear that. Right, and the cliffs. And then, of course, it's great for beachcombing. You have a lot of beaches out there that are good for beachcombing. Uh You know, so those people with their little beep, beep, beep machines, what are they called, metal detectors? (laughs) We used to have one for my daughter. She used to love the metal detectors. I think we still have it somewhere hidden in a closet. Yeah, if, you, if the batteries haven't run down. Well, we always take batteries out before we store what, anything. Uh, what did you find with that metal detector? Oh, we found little bric-a-brac stuff. You know, pennies. Uh, back in the day when they used to use uh, bottle caps. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, the ones that you kind of pull off with a bottle opener. Yeah. <laughs> so they had a lot of them. But and, and I believe you had to have a church key as well. No, a church key wasn't for a uh, bottle opening. It was for cans. Well, you can use a church key for a bottle opener as well. That's right. Because yes. on one end would be the opener, and the other end would be the... the can opener. <sighs> right. For, a, mm, yeah. for adult beverage. Right. And it's called a church key? 
Yes. Because uh, I, you I, never realized. We, we should look that up. That'll be on one of our trivia questions coming up soon. You know the answer to that? No, but I'm sure I'll find it. Oh, okay. <laughs> but a church key, of course, is a bottle opener. For those who don't know. Right. (laughs) Okay, so let's talk about one of the beaches. Please, tell me about a beach. Okay, let's go to Easton's Beach. Uh Uh-huh. Easton's Beach is located in the Newport region. Okay. Okay. Uh, It's Newport's only ocean beach. It's the only one. Okay. It's located adjacent to the famous Cliff Walk, so... Again, there's those cliffs that we've been talking about, you mm-hmm. know. And every time I think of these things, I still think of the movie, The Ghost of Mrs. Muir. Yeah. Do you remember that I movie? I remember it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a fun, it's a fun, sad, happy, sad little movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> for those who haven't seen it, please watch it. It's a good movie. <laughs> okay. Now, also, there's outdoor skateboard parks there and weekly free summer concerts. People are always asking me, what can you do for free? Mm-hmm. Well, go to the beach and take in a summer concert. That There you go. They have a carousel there for the kids during season. So in the summer, they'll have a a little summer carousel. Um, They also have an exploration center because they want to save the bay. Believe it or not, you know, people are still out there trying to save their area. And with such a small little area and such a small little uh, place, you naturally want to keep it good. Um, They also have, now this is something a lot of people ask me, you know, I'm I'm traveling with my in-laws or I'm traveling with my mom and she really can't walk around too much. Now, believe it or not, they have a thing that you can use. It's wheelchair for sand wheelchairs. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's free use. Free use. Over the sand wheelchair. wheelchairs. Mm-hmm. And this is all on Easton's Beach. So these these are things that you can might want to take surfboards? into. Can you get surfboards? Can you get surfboards as well? Uh, They do have rental cabanas, rental beach chairs, surfboards, and boogie boards. Mm -hmm. Boogie boards. And and umbrellas for us light-skinned people. I was just going (laughs) to say, I'm going to need an umbrella. Yes. Now, what about the kids? Is there room for them to play? There's playgrounds for the kids, covered picnic areas. They do have a seasonal snack bar and a beach store and souvenirs. You know, very, very touristy at that time Mm -hmm. Um, they do have public restrooms they have indoor outdoor cold cold water showers no i've got Um, a question mm -hmm. Uh, you know honey always wants to take her dog with her okay well here's there's two things okay honey's dog is a service dog so as we know service dogs are allowed to go anywhere yes that them's the law yes uh however there are no dogs permitted on the beach oh so for those who do not have a service dog, and it's basically they're not permitted on the beach during a time of year. Mm. So from Memorial Day to October 1st. So if you bring the dog prior or after, you're in good shape. Good. Okay. And I guess because of the people. Right. They might be concerned that the dog might get a little bit rambunctious with the other people that might be there. Because again, even though it's a small region and small area, you have a lot of people coming during the seasonal times. So remember, if you're going to be looking for something like this, you want to definitely call in advance to see if there's any space available in the hotels in the region, in the area, because you want to make sure you can get in. Parking, though, is available, but there is a charge. Now, when you say call ahead, now this is something that I know you don't like to talk about a lot, but Mm -hmm. you can help people do this, right? Right. I own Z. Michelson Travel, and all they have to do is give me a buzz or just check online, zmichelsontravel.com, and see what they're looking for. And if you don't see what you're looking for, you can connect right to me. Which for is nice. like, like a trip to Rhode Island. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just like a trip to Rhode Island. Now, there's another area called Block Island. I was thinking of Block Island. Mm-hmm. Now, are you talking about Crescent Beach? Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about Crescent Beach because okay. there's two different beaches uh, that I want to talk about on Block Island because there are so, like I said, there are so many. I can rattle off a list. And, of course, you know that I have a blog, and I'm going to be talking about this on my blog. And my blog is easy for people to see. It's zmichelson.blogspot.com. Um, we have, we is have there anything posted. that doesn't have Z. Michelson on it? I mean, everything I go to, it's Z. Michelson, Z. Michelson, Z. Michelson. <laughs> right. If you just type in Z. Michelson, I'll come up all over. <laughs> my pictures, my blogs, my podcasts, <laughs> but, but she, a show. <laughs> but she doesn't She doesn't do, uh, what is it you don't do? I don't do Windows. That's it. You don't do Windows. <laughs> 
So, like I said, there we're going to go over to Block Island, and there's uh, now, basically about six beaches on Block Island, but we're only going to talk about a well, couple. Now, Crescent Beach make, is exciting for me mm-hmm. because it's got white sand. Yes, it's a stretch of white sandy beach along the east side of the island. So um, that's some place that people that like to go just to kind of walk the beach and stroll the beach. It's nice, white, and sandy. Now, again, this is the northern, northeastern territory of the United States. In the wintertime, it's going to be cold. Yes. <laughs> Keep that in mind. This is not a visit to Florida. So one of the yeah, so. we're, things we're we're looking for are places you can think ahead. Mm-hmm. So you can think and make plans. Well, some people like to go to the beaches on the colder winter days. They enjoy that surf splash hitting their, hitting their face, that cold, brisk, burr stuff. And freezing. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> now... If you're looking for seclusion, ah, uh, mm-hmm, would seclusion. that be that would be Mansion Beach? Oh, yes, yes, it's a secluded beach on Block Island, and it's famous, famous for its big waves. Okay, um, they say it's best to arrive by bike because parking is limited. Oh, <laughs> so have your bike ready. Yes, and you know, as I said before, there are bike rentals around towns and things like that. So, you know, it's almost like uh, what's Murder, She Wrote, where you see uh, Angela Lansbury riding through the little streets on her little bicycle. (laughs) Now, I, I have a confession to make. A confession. I have never watched Murder, She Wrote. <gasps> you never watched those shows? I've never seen that. I've seen them so many times, I can probably do Angela's part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you're, but uh, I'm also a big Angela Lansbury fan. Well, yeah, and she was a great singer. I never thought of her as a great singer. I she thought had, of her as a great actress. Right, but she mm-hmm. had great voice. She did stuff in the early days. Right, well, we also know her as Mrs. Potts in Beauty and the Beast. Right. She sung the song in the movie. See? Um, also, you know, I, I seen her many, many years ago in a movie with Danny Kay called The Court Jester, mm-hmm. where she was like the princess, and uh, she was hysterical. But if you look at her face... It's Even a, though she is more, she is more mature now. She still has that same cute little face. Well, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, hats off to Angela. <laughs> hats off to Angela. Hats off to Angela. Oh. So again, if you're looking for white sandy beaches, you have Crescent Beach. If you're looking for some more seclusion, you have Mansion Beach. And of course, if you are looking for something that you can bring the kids to and you want some more memorable pictures of the cliffs look at easton's beach Mm. and again during the winter time it's going to be a little chilly things are going to be closed down so double check in advance um those are beaches of rhode island just some of the beaches beaches. of rhode island okay so now do we have more or should we just take a little break well what i'm going to do is i'm going to tease a little bit because i have the trivia question oh the traveling trivia you question keep forgetting about that yeah the traveling trivia <laughs> question okay the traveling trivia question as you know rhode island is extremely small the territory area is very short what was it like 40 some odd miles long and 36 some odd miles wide you could walk it in a day right okay how many beaches does Rhode Island have? Didn't you tell us that? No, I have not. Oh, you haven't. Uh, is it more than 20? Is it more than 50? Or is it more than 100 public and private beaches? Now, remember, it is the Ocean State. It's called the Ocean State. But remember, it's a very, very small state area. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, again, how many beaches does Rhode Island actually have? Beaches, and when I mean beaches, I mean public and private. Is it more than 20? More than 50 or more than 100. Okay. We're going to take a short break, but after we come back, when we come back, we're going to talk about what? What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about science and nature. All right. All taking place in Rhode Island. Until then, I'm Jay Lawrence. And this is Z Michelson. Hi, this is Jerry Norton from Z Max Radio. You've listened to our podcasts. Now maybe you'd like some music. Let me tell you about Z Max Radio. We play a wide variety of your kind of music 24-7. Music hits of the 80s, 90s, and today, plus a little of the 70s, that are light and bright. And catch me, Jerry Norton, getting around. It's a great mix of music, and you don't have to do the mixing. ZMAX Radio. Music, travel tips and information, and it's free. ZMAX Radio at ZMAXRadio.com. Planning your vacation? 
Hi, I'm Z Michelson from the J and Z Show. I can help you plan your trip from start to finish. Call me today at 352-874-4724 or just check out my website, zmichelsontravel.com. That's Z, Z-E-E, Michelson, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-S-O-N, travel.com. Hi, I'm Mary Van Dyke, and I'm Rediscovering America. I know big stories can happen in some of the smaller towns right here in the USA. And you can learn more about small towns in America at livability.com. If we missed your hometown and you want to share it with others, just send me a note at the bottom of our website, rediscoveringamerica.com. Until next time, I'm Mary Van Dyke, helping you rediscover America. Okay, we're back. I'm Jay Lawrence. And this is Z. Michelson. Once again, this is the Z. Michelson Travel Podcast. And the podcast is looking at rediscovering America. And rediscovering America means we want to see all... All All there is to see about America. Right. There's so much. Right. There's so much to be seen. And and so we're, we're kind of picking on one state at a time. Now, if we did that, that means we would be here for 52 weeks. Oh, no, we'll be here for more than 52 weeks because each state can have numerous things to see and do. Oh, I was thinking we're going to do one state a week, but I guess... They're, well, we're, they're, gonna, we're going to attempt to do one state a week, but certain states ah, can keep us busy for a long, long time. Right, and, and mm-hmm. soon we're going to be talking to people in those states so you can hear more about what's happening. Right, so you can really plan your vacation and drive around the U.S. and... Jump in, jump in your RV and drive, fly, drive, fly, boat, canoe. Well, you can you can boat if you really want to. I guess you can you know boat from the New England area down, down the East Coast waters, down and around into the Gulf of Mexico, around Florida, and then zip through the Panama Canal. Oh my goodness! And then up around the other side. Well, now listen, that, we've, that's kind of long. We've <laughs> got to get back to the traveling <laughs> trivia question because I can, the phone lines are lighting up. <laughs> right. Everybody wants to know the what, answer. What is the traveling trivia question answer? Okay. Well, the question was, how many beaches does the state of Rhode Island actually have? One. Was it more than 20? Was it more than 50? Or was it more than 100? And I'm talking public and private beaches. Okay. Okay. You got a guess here, Jay? Um, let me see. Do I have my, 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 I don't have my sound machine. I don't have the sound machine to make the, the right answer because I believe Go ahead. the answer would be, C, more than 100. And you'd be absolutely correct. So we'll do a hoot hoot. Woot, 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 woot. <laughs> yes, believe it or not, in an area that is so small, there's more than 100 private and public beaches. So if you're planning on and say, you know, you just absolutely love beaches or you just want to do beach tours around the United States, which is something else you can do. I want to see all the beaches. Rhode Island would definitely be one to put on the list. Now, See, my opinion, now I know you're not wanting my opinion, but Admiral Rickover's opinion would be there's only one beach. I mean. No, how, there isn't. How do you, it's, it's one ocean, <laughs> it's one beach. Come on. Okay. It's one ocean, it's one beach. Let's, let's take that into effect for, hmm, Florida. <laughs> Florida is surrounded by land on three sides. It's a, it's a peninsula. No, wait, what did you say that again? Florida is surrounded by, by water, water on three sides. <laughs> it's it well, technically Florida wasn't even here at one point. Oh, really? It was underwater. But um and it soon will be. <laughs> but you have you have inlets and outlets and certain areas that you cannot see beaches and then you have the the scrubs or whatever they're called when you go out by the dunes and you can't see beaches for miles except you just see like little swampy areas. How did the pilgrims ever get here? I'm still amazed how the Indians, the American Indians, the Native Americans actually lived and survived through. In the state of Florida. In the state of Florida. Yeah. And you look at some of these scrub palms and things like that, and you just wonder how do they how did they get around? I mean, you know, I won't go in the woods. It's, <laughs> it's ouch, you know. <laughs> but I think they look for a hill. 
<laughs> higher up, but you know that they lived, you know, as part of the land. So and that's interesting. So speaking of part of the land, I'm sorry I got you off mm-hmm. on that. Uh, well, we're talking about science and nature, and that's what we're going to talk about now. So, is there any science or nature in Rhode Island? No, absolutely nothing. Nothing. <laughs> okay, well, tune in again next week. <laughs> well, when we talk science and nature, of course. You know, it's all very, very full. Are there any of good things. museums? Museums galore. So okay. let's talk. Let's talk. And again, it goes by region. So if you're looking for regions, you got the Blackstone Valley, you got Block Island, you got East Bay, you got Newport County. You have all of these different regions that you can go to, and each one has certain things available to it. So to give you an example, in the Blackstone Valley, you have the Fort Nature Refuge. Okay, you also have killing, Killingly Pond Management Area. You have Long Pond Woods, the Powder Mill Ledges Wildlife Refuge. So you do have these things. In Block Island, you have Block Island Marine Time Institute and the National Wildlife Refuge. In East Bay, you have the Audubon Environmental Education Center. So you have all of these different things for every type of personality, like I, uh, you know, people are going to write in, don't write in, don't write in. I will never kill a bird, but I'm not a big bird fancier. So for me to uh, go out with the Audubon Society and stare at birds at three o'clock in the morning is just not not my thing. thing. But some people want to. So they will, you know, want to log on to these Audubon situations at one of these different areas so let's take one of the areas how and about talk a museum about of natural history okay one of the things i love is natural history as well as a planetarium do you remember as a kid going to any of the planetariums in your area boy two shows two confessions mm-hmm. i've never been to a planetarium you've never been to a planetarium two shows two confessions that's what i said oh my gosh well yeah. really one show two segments because you confess that you never saw Angela Lansbury in Murder, She Wrote earlier. Right, right. That's what. That, that, what, did, what did I say? Two shows. Two shows. It's one, show, one show. Two confessions. <laughs> Father, where are you? <laughs> well, planetariums are really neat, particularly if you're into the stars and the sky. And you know, I just love that. You know, I can sit and stare up at the clouds and the stars at night. You know, I sit in my hot tub or jacuzzi here in Florida and I look up at the stars. Look. Lucky me. Uh, Rhode Island's only natural history museum, and it's home to the state's only public planetarium, and that is the Museum of Natural History and Planetarium in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, you just took the words right out of my mouth because I was going to say, where is it? But <laughs> And, of course, it served for a very unique educational learning center, it's science and cultural resources, things like that. Um, so when you go to these museums... Bring your kids. Bring your kids. Well, yeah. Um, um, I'm also going to say not that it's not kids friendly, but remember there are other people around. You don't want your kids running amok. (laughs) Um, So take a look at the Museum of Natural History and Planetarium over in Providence, Rhode Island. Okay. Now, what about, you know, they're they're close to the sea, Mm -hmm. so they should have some stuff about the ocean, right? Okay, so we're going to jump over to Block Island. Okay. Or take the ferry over. We're going to uh, take the ferry over to Block Island. Because <laughs> remember, I said there's ferry ferries available throughout the our areas. You have to just double check. Um, there's a Block Island Maritime Institute. Now, have you gone to any maritime museums in your history? Is this going to be a third confession? <laughs> I, I think it is. <laughs> But I did ride the ferry in, in New York once. You rode the Staten Island Ferry? I went, Yes, Staten Island Ferry. Oh, how exciting. Ferries are always fun. Um, as a matter of fact, I rode the Staten Island Ferry too, t- too many times to remember. But um, Block Island Maritime Institute is located naturally on I Block think Island. I, I think I saw you on that. Did in- you see me on the ferry? Yes. <laughs> me and Barbara, we were singing. Yeah. <laughs> um, the marine science and maritime activities are for all ages. So keep that in mind. Again, it's kid-friendly. You want to bring the kids to these things and let them see all sorts of stuff. Now, during the summer, they offer a variety of educational programs that you know you can have the kids basically age-appropriate mm-hmm. what they want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll include a harbor tour. 
Mm-hmm. Now, this is why I said age appropriate because they'll dissect the squid. You know, some kids will go, Ooh, we're dissecting a squid. Frankly, I, I like to eat squid. It's pretty yummy. It's <laughs> They'll do coastal habitat expeditions. You know, you know, what lives here, all of that. And they can explore a large outdoor, what they're calling touch tanks. And they'll have things like horseshoe crabs, squid, sea urchins, and oyster toadfish. Mm-hmm. Now, I have a funny story about a horseshoe crab. Tell me the funny story <laughs> about a horseshoe crab. Now, I didn't see any horseshoe crabs in Rhode Island. But uh, years ago, when I was a young teen, um, we came down with my parents, and I was able to bring one of my friends along. So you me, came down where? Down to Florida. Oh, down, okay. down here where we currently reside. Yes, yes. And my friend and I were walking along the beach, and we found a dead horseshoe crab. And we never seen one before, because now we were city kids. We came from Brooklyn. So it's like, oh, what is that? What is that? So we decided to bring this horseshoe crab back to our science class, because we were in biology back then. And what did you put it in? (laughs) I can smell it now. Bingo. (laughs) Um, Luckily, my grandmother's husband had formaldehyde. I don't, don't ask me why he had formaldehyde, but we lucked out and he had formaldehyde. So we actually packed this horseshoe crab deteriorating in a large box with bags and stuff with yeah. formaldehyde. <laughs> <laughs> and we carried it, well, because we did not fly. We, we were actually driving up and down the coast. Mm-hmm. We drove it back. And it stayed in my friend's house, and that uh, class was never done. Oh, no. So my friend's father, about six months later... Said, what's in here? No, was following the smell, trying to figure out what was going on. Oh, my, it's a wonder they didn't call the police, <laughs> you know? And he came upon the horseshoe crab. <laughs> <sighs> but it is a unique little thing. I, you know, we also... You know, seen starfish. We didn't realize that the starfish break off. That was some other learning educational <laughs> thing for city kids. That if you pick up a starfish by its little feet, they break off. Oh. And then they replenish themselves later on, which people don't know. But don't don't pick up a starfish that way. Otherwise, you're not going to have it. You know, we had it in our fingers one minute and gone the next. Oh. <laughs> Slippery little devils. But. Just like I said, this is the Block Island Maritime Institute. It has all of these fun things for kids to see and do, as well as adults. Mm Kid-friendly. And it also hosts a weekly Tuesday night lecture series in which scientists, historians, and authors discuss fascinating maritime topics. Now, that's something that maybe an adult might like. And Uh, again, it's during the summer months. Yeah, I would go to that. Yeah, isn't that pretty cool? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I I think that would be pretty cool. I would learn a lot. You know, I wonder if they have the, like, the old man in the sea. I know they can't have that author around, but maybe they discuss it, you know. <laughs> Hemingway? Yes. Ernest? <laughs> Ernest. Oh, Ernest, are you available? <laughs> a seance and, a, and an author. <laughs> but, yeah, so that's one of the things on Block Island. Now I'm going to jump over to Newport, Rhode Island. Good idea. Mm-hmm. Now, as you see, I'm, I'm jumping all over. We were in Providence. Now we're in Block Island. Now I'm over in Newport. It's a small state. You can it's jump very easily. Yeah, and like I said, there's so much to do. These are only a few of the things in these sections mm-hmm. of town. Okay, so let's talk about Save the Bay Seal Watch Cruise. Now, this is a cruise. This is actually a cruise. Okay. And it's been around for the past 12 years. And they motor through historic Newport Harbor, and they view the seals off the rocks of Rose Island and the Newport Bridge. Now, how long does this take? Uh, it's it's a one hour watch or a two hour watch. They have a lighthouse tour. They oh. have several, and and it departs from 142 Long Wharf Dock in Newport at the intersection of Long Wharf and Washington Streets, and there is parking available. That's great. But you're definitely going to want to know when the boat leaves, so you know, look for that. Now, this is something, again, you are a travel agent. I'm a travel and agent. And you could get these trips scheduled for people right. if they want. Right, we can put together their itinerary, Okay, and we can do all of that. Now, what I want to talk about is... If you have not seen a seal, hello. <laughs> Most people see seals at 
shows like right. SeaWorld or wherever. And they see them there. Now, when I was in California, I had the pleasure of seeing them up close and personal in real life. Uh, up in the, near San Francisco, near San Francisco. Uh, my roommate and I traveled up north. We were up near Carmel. And Braggart. we, yeah, we were up there. We were up in that region of town. We were stopping in to see Clint. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but what we did was we got there so late because we were driving from Los Angeles up there. We got there like th- two, three o'clock in the morning and we were exhausted. So we just crashed, you know, in our hotel room. And we kept hearing these barking dogs. It's like, it's two o'clock in the morning. Don't these people stop their dogs from barking? We finally fell asleep. We got up the next morning. We kept hearing these bloody dogs barking. It's like, what the heck is that? I I have the feeling. (laughs) So we went out to explore. Mm -hmm. How far out did you go? Not too far because we were close to the water. Mm -hmm. So we kept following the sounds of the barking dogs as they were getting louder and louder and louder. And to our amazement, it was a group of seals sitting on the rocks off the shore. What a concept. Mm -hmm. So naturally they want to save the the bay seal and it's a cruise and, you know, proceeds probably go to that. And you, you know, if you want to show the kids what a seal looks like in their real territory as opposed to in a show Mm -hmm. this would be a fun little thing for you to do but again you can get a a travel guide telling them you know when the shows are when they're going to have a a cruise Uh, my guess is they're not saying it right now but my guess is they may not have too much during the heavy winter season right okay but these are some of the things that you can do, science and nature. And think ahead for the summer. Great place to take right. the kids. The summer, even late spring. Right. So these are things that you can actually do in the great United States of America. This is just part of exploring Rhode Island. And we're going to have more of Rhode Island next time we come back. Hey, and if you want to hear great music, $24, 24 hours $24 a day. $24 a day? Yes. I like that. Can we charge $24 a day for great music? No. Great music on <laughs> ZMAX Radio, which is Rediscovering America, which is all a part of Rediscovering America, just like Z Michelson is. And your pod, the podcast, the it- the, the blog. The blog. Right, I have a blog. What am I missing? Okay, well, we have the blog, we have the podcast, we have ZMAX Radio, we have uh, Z Michelson Travel. And go, we're going to have go, a, go, go. We're going to have a Rediscovering America t shirt coming out soon, too. Yes, something we're gonna that, have that, you that, too. May, that you may want to get. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, not everybody is going to want that. It's just certain people. You, it's special. Just special people. <laughs> well, where are we going next week, Z? Well, we're going to be staying we're going to be staying Island, in right? Rhode Island, and we're going to be talking a little bit more about adventure and things to see, places and, to go, right, and tours and sightseeing. So oh. we're going to be doing a little bit more exploring that way. All right. Well, until next time, I'm Jay Lawrence, and this is Z Michelson, helping you rediscover America. <laughs> <laughs>